So you're moving to Pittsburgh and you want to know how bad our winters truly are. Well, we have Scott Harbaugh here with WPXI and he's gonna tell us everything we need to know about the winter season here in Pittsburgh so that you're prepared for your move. And we're going after it right now. Hi everyone, I'm Riley Madden with EXP Realty. And I'm Scott Harbaugh with WPXI TV. Here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If this is your first time to this channel and you wanna learn absolutely everything on what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, and play, and also what's the weather like here in Pittsburgh, make sure you start by tapping that subscribe button and click that little bell so you're notified every time we come out with a new video. We get so many reach outs every single day from people all over the world who are making a move here to Pittsburgh and we absolutely love it. If you're considering a move to Pittsburgh or any of our surrounding suburbs, make sure to reach out, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, DM us on social media, however you wanna get a hold of us, we've got your back when making a move to Pittsburgh. So a lot of people move to Pittsburgh because they really want those four seasons to enjoy, but to truly enjoy the winters, you really need to know what to expect. So as far as average high and low temperatures, Scott, could you tell us a little bit on what that looks like and what months are we typically in our winter season? You gotta focus on the, the average part because our temperatures fluctuate a lot during the winter. We can have highs in the 60s one day and be only zero the next day. So a lot of swings, average though is a high of 38 and a low of 24 degrees. That encompasses December, January, and February. Now, there are two different kinds of winters. There are the ones we celebrate that start on December 21st every year or 22nd. Then there's meteorological winter. That actually just cuts the months, December, January, February. So we're working in a three month range right there. Because by the time we get to March, we're warming up and we're starting to get some days where temperatures are consistently in the 60s and 70s. As far as below freezing temperatures, how often are we seeing those? A lot. If you take the 90 days, 91 days of winter, we probably go below freezing at least 70% of the time at night. Now during the day, generally we stay at or above freezing, but there have been stretches in Pittsburgh where we've literally gone almost an entire month without getting above 32 degrees. Now that happened back in 1977, 78. We had a couple of really cold winters. Generally, we'll get a five or six day stretch where the temperature never gets back above 32 degrees, but that's only one piece of the puzzle because the wind can make it feel a whole lot worse. And we yeah. talk about wind chill factor a lot <laughs> around here. So like you get, a, you get going first thing in the morning, you know, you're thinking, oh, it's gonna be a high of 35 today, that's fantastic. But if you step out at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, that wind chills five degrees, it's a completely different dress component than in the afternoon. Yeah, you yeah. feel that wind in your mm -hmm. face. Low freezing is really when things get uncomfortable. You Absolutely. need the ice scrapers, warm up your car before getting in. And then... worry about ice on the roads too, even if it's dry, like on a day like today where it's sunny outside, you know, when the temperature's first thing in the morning down to your 20, if there was rain the day before, that can freeze on roadways. And that's why we tend to have a lot of accidents in the winter around here. And then with all of our hills and- Hills don't make it fun in the winter. <laughs> Yeah, so all-wheel drive and your winter tires, mm -hmm. best bet. Now, speaking of below freezing temperatures, now, what does our snowfall really look like? Not as much as some people would think. A lot of people who move into Pittsburgh think that it just snows from Halloween to Easter and there's no break in between. Not true. We do pretty good. We average about 44 inches of snow a winter, which is kind of nice because we do get those periods where there's six, seven inches of snow on the ground, everything's white, everything's beautiful. But that comes over the course of five months. Our snow season really starts in November. We usually get a couple doses of snow in November, most of it usually light. But then as we go through December, January, we start picking it up. And February is actually one of our snowiest months of the year, mainly because as we're trying to get warmer into spring, we get more of a fight between the air masses and that can produce more moisture. So some of our biggest snowfalls have been during the month of February in 2010, we had snowmageddon which was 21 inches of snow in about 15 hours. Yeah, I remember that. That's the last blizzard I really remember. Power was out in the home for a week. Last true one we had in that entire month, we had 48 inches of snow, four feet of snow in one month. And that's more than we usually get in an entire winter. Wow. Yeah. So typically we're getting smaller doses now compared to the bigger blizzards? Yeah, once every eight or 10 years, we generally get a bigger one. And by bigger, I mean 12 inches or more. Most of our snowfalls are an inch here, three inches there, two inches there, because we get a lot of what's called lake effect snow. So when we have cold air come in, we get a northwest wind off Lake Erie. Also one of the reasons why we're so cloudy all the time around here. But if the air is cold enough to come over the lake and the lake isn't frozen yet, we get bands of lake effect snow. 
Pittsburgh might only see an inch and a half, but places like Butler County, Beaver County can get three, four, five inches of snow easily. Mm -hmm. And then parts of southern Washington County, just south of Pittsburgh, may not even see more than a dusting. So one good memory with the blizzards and all of the snow was those two hour delays and the school closures. So could you tell us a little bit about what we see in terms of school closures nowadays? It depends on the district and it's because of the pandemic with COVID. So during COVID, every district bought these computer programs and softwares where they could do remote learning. But the contracts on them were only two or three years. Some school districts have continued it so they never have to close school or delay school. They can just do remote learning. Other school districts have chosen not to renew the contract, so they will have delays and closures. So it depends on what school district you live in, and you'll want to check with that school district before you move to Pittsburgh to see what their current policy is. Now, normally in a given year, if all the schools are still delaying or closing, we'd see probably about four closings a year on average, which is why under the Pennsylvania um, Board of Education, you have to have 180 instruction days. Most public school districts schedule 184, that leaves them four snow days to work with during the course of the year. Those are my favorite memories of the snow. Which ones, was. the two hour delays or the whole snow days? Um, I think I like the snow days, snow better, days better, but the two hour delays were always nice. So with all the snow, the ice, the hills, obviously the drive-in could get a little complicated in Pittsburgh. So could you tell us a little bit about the driving conditions and what they should expect? Yeah, you gotta give the road crews time to clear the roads. Now we're not Buffalo, we're not Cleveland. We don't deal well with six, seven inches of snow, but our crews do a pretty good job with an inch, inch and a half of snow, which is our general snowfall. The problem is if it comes right during the morning rush or right during the evening rush, crews can't get to those roads because there's so much traffic. So a lot of times we have a lot of accidents first thing in the morning, 7 to 9 a.m. and then 3 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. The key is be smart, be safe. We have too many people in our area, and I'm a native Pittsburgher, but too many of us think, ah, oh, it's just a half inch of snow. I can just go 35, 40 miles per hour, no problem. Here's the issue. It's actually easier to drive on six inches of snow than it is on a half inch of snow. Oh, wow. Because with a half inch of snow, you have a little bit of water underneath of it. That water can freeze and form ice, so it's more slippery. Six inches of snow packs down, gives you better traction as long as you have good tires. So if you have good tires and good all-wheel drive, you'll have no problem in the four, five, six inches of snow, but everyone has a problem in the half inch of snow. Yeah, that's very interesting. I did not know that. I always say, give me a half foot of snow over a half inch anytime. This makes for prettier yeah. views, too. True. Okay, so Scott, we'd love to know what your favorite thing is about our winter season and then your least favorite. I love snow. I still cannot sleep the night before the first snow of the season. If, if we're forecasting snow to start in the middle of the night, I am up several times checking out the window before I have to get up to work. <laughs> if it's on the weekend, doesn't matter, I'm up. Because I'm such a Christmas fanatic that everything leading up to that, like once we start to get that fall chill in the air in October, we start to get into the leaves coming off the trees, the first snow heading toward Christmas. I'm like in the best mood of my life, November <laughs> and December. I get to, we get to like February and I'm done. Because the, the big problem around here is the snow is pretty. And whether you love it or not, most people will say, look, it looks pretty. But when it starts to melt and we start to get those warmer days in February, then it's not pretty anymore. It's gray and it's brown. And you get a little patch of snow here, yeah. a little patch of mud over here, and it just isn't pretty anymore. So I'm usually done with it by the middle of February. Completely the same way. Are you? Love Christmas, always love the snowfalls, and just very excited. But yeah, like you said, once it starts getting brown, and we're ready for some spring. And sadly, if you're going to move to Pittsburgh during the winter season, don't think that all of our Christmases are white. They're not. Actually, the majority of them are not white. We get a white Christmas about 30% of the time, and that doesn't even mean it snows on Christmas Day. That only happens 15% of the time. It means there's at least an inch of snow on the ground Christmas morning when you wake up. Now, once in a blue moon, this has happened twice in the last 20 years, we go to bed on Christmas Eve and the ground is bare and we wake up Christmas morning and it's white. That's <laughs> the best thing in the world. And a few important tips for surviving our winters you're going to need to know. So a good thing with your cars is obviously that all-wheel drive, your winter tires, and an electric starter because you're going to have to start your car at least five to ten minutes before leaving your house just to get that ice off and to warm it up so it's not completely freezing. Just be careful if you do have your car outside and you use the electric starter, make sure snow's clear from the tailpipe if we do have a heavy snow because obviously you're gonna get the carbon monoxide in. And obviously have some bags of sand or even uh, 
kitty litter in the back trunk of the car. It helps to weight your car down a little bit so you get better traction in the snow. Another thing that's really important if you're looking for a property is to get a garage to put your car in so that it's not taking too much intense damage from the cold temperatures. When I moved back to Pittsburgh several years ago, I did not have a garage right away. I was like, okay, this isn't too bad scraping off the snow. Once I got the garage, I forgot how much I missed it, and it definitely is key, especially in those winter months. So another added bonus is having that fireplace in there, whether it's gas or wood burning in your house, just to add a nice aura and just coziness to your everyday. Also keeps you from putting the heat up too much during the winter months, and you get to relax a little bit more and just enjoy the indoors. So another bonus is definitely taking a trip to kind of break up the cold stretches and taking a trip down to Florida or any of the warmer states. It's always a big bonus and you come back kind of appreciating the cold again. Winters are not all that bad. There's definitely plenty of fun things to do and enjoy. So not only do we have plenty of fun ice rinks downtown at PPG Place, but you also have two ski resorts nearby. That's going to be Seven Springs and Hidden Valley. So it always makes for a fun and cozy winter trip. And obviously ski resorts around the area, quick trip, less than an hour to both of them from the city of Pittsburgh. Exactly, yeah, 45 minutes, I believe, mm -hmm. for both, both directions. Which is great. It is. And then a few other things you could check out are like Phipps Conservatory. They do beautiful lights during the winter season. And then you also have your light up night and just different winter festivities. It's really a great place to be all year round. It is. I love the four seasons and just the charm and the joy that Christmas and the winter months bring. So thank you, Scott, for coming on and just for giving me. us all the information we need on the winter weather and just what these people moving can expect with our winter season here in Pittsburgh. So if you are considering a move to Pittsburgh, we help people every single day dive deep into what's it really like living here. And we get calls, text messages, emails, DMs every single day from people literally all over the world who are making a move here. And we absolutely love it. So if you are considering moving here, make sure to reach out. And if you wanna know everything else about Pittsburgh, our neighborhoods and our real estate market, you could start by watching our next videos here. And, and we'll, we'll catch, catch you in the, in the next, next one. one.